people right right uh michelle i mean again you you've had a lot um fr from being on the inside from pretty much the time the union was formed right i mean you were you were there from the very beginning so That's to right. where to, you know i know that connor had taken a step back and you ended up becoming vp you were you were not originally a vp and you got promoted there um tell us a little bit about Kind of your your whole journey there and and how we ended up having this conversation i definitely want to hear about some stuff that happened in october again i'm not sure how much you guys want to disclose about that uh, there are definitely some tweets i want to ask about that went out <laughs> after uh the 17th but uh but please go go ahead yeah the mic is yours michelle this is again uh, she got cut off before i'm so sorry your mic wasn't wasn't on early on this this is Michelle Valentin Nieves. Michelle and I have been talking online for for months and months and months. Um, she's been wronged. I mean, and I've seen her be wronged. All right, and and I'll come out and say that you know it's not about bias or opinion. That's a fact. She has been wronged, and I think everybody here will agree. And that's why they're they're here supporting her, but also they all want a union where that you know that that actually supports the workers that voted for it. And that does things to fight corporate, that does things to improve their working conditions, that fights for the $30 minimum wage, for the $30 wage that everybody has been talking about. All of a sudden, that got abandoned. So, again, I'm sorry, I'm going on because I, I have a lot I want to say, too. But, Michelle, this is yours. Again, I give you the mic tonight. It's all yours. Um. Okay, so I'll just go to um, the days of organizing. Um, there was always a power struggle. Um, within um, the groups, which is normal. That's to be expected, right? Because everyone is different. Like, I have my opinions, you have yours. Termo has his, Ronald had his, Nicole has hers, right? So, you know, the point of having a union is that you have to have a safe space in order to agree to disagree, right? We're not always going to agree. So I have to say that there was always power struggles um, between the group um, way before um, the election even happened. Um, I think that once the election happened and, you know, it was um, a victorious moment for all of us, um, at that time, a little bit, um, it started with the traveling with Christian Smalls. Little by little, it was just like less communication and more traveling. Um, I started to notice a little bit of those changes um, the big disruption that happened um, between the group happened with the introduction of the Constitution and bylaws. Um, and a lot of the issues that we had at that time is because of the Constitution and bylaws, the way that it was drafted by a lawyer of the name of Ritu Singla. Um, she was the one that, uh, that drafted this Constitution and, by and bylaws. She's uh, a lawyer with the Jeannie Myron um, legal team. So it's uh, Ritu Singla, Seb Goldstein, and uh, Jeannie Myron. So the Constitution and bylaws uh, at that time, there was a huge disagreement as to whether we were going to go ahead and do the contract fight or if we were going to go ahead and try to do elections like in the near future. Uh, those of us, some of us wanted the contract fight. Some of us wanted to go ahead and do elections in the near future. We decided um, that we were going to uh, draft the Constitution so that we would go ahead and do the contract fight first. And then after we go ahead and obtain a CBA from Amazon or attempt to obtain a CBA from Amazon, we were going to go ahead and do the elections and that everyone that was at whatever position they had were to be the interim until we went ahead and did our elections, even though elections are not until every three years anyway. That's usually like across the board for most unions, right? Most unions, it's every three years. Um, so this is where a lot of the problems arose. There was a huge uh, group within our group, right? That decided to walk out. I believe this was on December 9th. At that time, I was the recording secretary. So when I was registered with the Department of Labor as an officer of the union, I was actually registered as the recording secretary at that time. Um, so there was just a lot of things that we weren't being kept in the loop with. 
besides the issue with the constitution and bylaws at that time i didn't think that it was a big deal because as a union we could always amend the constitution mm -hmm. and bylaws right it's not written in stone so i mean i understood why people were upset don't get me wrong right because there were some people that were really looking forward um to the elections and for some reason they were just like obsessed with elections and it, it was just turned into like a really big deal with me being concerned like as an amazon worker and someone that had been there for several years already um and i had been targeted by management i mean i've seen people have heart attacks strokes i've seen women go into labor premature labor in amazon i've seen a worker almost cut his entire finger off um it was bleeding all over afe2 and singles pack i mean i've seen horrendous things happening inside of JFK 8. So at that point, you know, I wanted to go ahead and fight for the contract fight. Like I wanted to just like organize, get as many shop stewards as possible, recruit as possible, do the contract fight, and then we can do elections later on. That's what I was thinking. Um, That doesn't mean that that's what everyone else was thinking. And I understand that people were feeling a different way. Um, But to me at that time, I just didn't understand what the obsession with elections was. I was, you know, in a totally different place at that time when we introduced the constitution and bylaws. Then it turned into a whole thing where um, they went ahead and decided to turn into a caucus. There was no um, exhaustion of internal remedies. So we had no communication from any of these individuals. Um, we did not receive an email. We did not receive a phone call, a text message. Um, a letter. I mean, it was nothing. It went completely silent, I'd say for about five to six months. Um, so we went ahead and did, you know, what we were supposed to be doing, which was um, recruiting, organizing, having trainings. We started doing multiple shop steward trainings. I brought in um, labor experts from other unions to try to help us um, that were more experienced to go ahead and build the structure of the union. Um, we also went ahead and implemented uh, to try and expand the executive board. Um, and this is where we, um, as our group, not cause not uh, including the caucus, because the caucus was not around during any of this time. Um, we, as a small group, had an issue with the expansion of the executive board. Uh, it was very difficult for us to do it because we were getting a lot of just negative um and just conflicts from the legal team which i did not understand because as a union you guys are the labor lawyers and you're retained by the by the union but you work for the union you're not the union you're not the membership you're not the rank and file you don't work at amazon um and it was very frustrating for me when i have to do numerous zoom calls or phone calls um, with these lawyers um, to try and amend this constitution so that we can go ahead and expand the executive board. And it was, you know, always, well, we can't the amend the, the constitution because it's going to do this, it's going to do that. It was always an issue. Um, so we went ahead and decided to expand the executive board anyway, um, because mm -hmm. our intentions were to amend the constitution to go ahead and include an expanded executive board. Um, the vision that I had at that time um, along with um, a co-worker and, and a good friend of mine that was involved at that time was is that we wanted two executive board members for every single department. Um, we also wanted at least one to two shop stewards in every single department so that there's one for the day shift and the night shift and then, you know, the RT shift and all of those things. It's very difficult to explain it because Amazon is a 24-hour facility. So there's different departments, there's different shifts. Um, every single department is completely different. It's a completely different culture, a completely different set of, of people working there, different managers, um, different tasks to do. So it, it's just a very segregated warehouse, even though it's really huge, um, but it's very segregated. Every single department is segregated from the other department. Um, so there has to be a lot of organizing within every single department, if that if that makes sense. Um, so every single department has to be organized within that department. It can't be done like just the entire building, right? It has to be done department by department by department. Um, and then 
we um, got into conversations with the caucus again. Um, there was uh, discussions between myself and Kathleen. She was the one at that time that I felt um, comfortable reaching out to because she was another woman. Um, and as a woman in leadership, I was already starting to feel a lot of microaggressions from some of the men um, surrounding me. I did not understand, you know, at that time what the microaggressions were because I had been working along with these folks for so long, right? I mean, we went through so much together, so much organizing, you know, the election. Um, we were in federal court with Amazon for four months, um, going back and forth. I mean, we organized together. We've been thrown out of the building together. We were suspended together for like 60 days after an electrical fire in the building. So, you know, in my mind, I just did not understand where the microaggressions were coming from. And I just could not understand why, you know, being a woman, where all of this aggression was coming from just because I'm a woman. You know, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's not because I'm a terrible person or, you know, I'm disrespectful or, you know what I'm trying to say? Or something like crazy about my personality. It's just like my gender. The fact that I'm a woman is just like a problem for some people. Um, and the fact that I'm very outspoken and I say what's on my mind and I just keep things, you know, very honest and very upfront when the time comes, right? The majority of the time I'm like super nice, um, friendly, but then there's times where I, if, if I feel like I have to tell you something, I'm just going to keep it, you know, very frank and just say what it is. Right. And some people, um, can accept that coming from a woman and some people can't, unfortunately, but you know, with all of that being said, um, the conversations with Kathleen started, I was the one who initially tried to set up the mediation between the two groups. Um, even though this caucus tries to come in like they're the savior riding in on the white horse, mm -hmm. right? Of a thing, um, where they're just waving the white flag and they're just coming in to like save everyone. Um, no, that's not the way it happened. It was actually me. I was the one um, that tried to set up the mediation initially between the two groups. Um, and then there was another mediator um, that got involved, a neutral mediator, that uh, there was a little bit of emails going back and forth and some discussions. And some of the board members just didn't feel comfortable um, with this third party mediator um, participating in the meeting. So then, you know, the mediation was called off. And then it just went on from there. Then uh, we got a notice in the mail that we were being taken to federal court. That's the next thing that I knew. Um, and then from there, it was just, you know, a lot of arguing back and forth, a lot of just miscommunications. Um, Chris was constantly traveling. Um, so this was a major, major problem because there was a lot of infighting going on. And a lot of, you know, just frustration and the fact that he was constantly traveling. Um, he would travel for days and weeks at a time. Um, sometimes he was available. If you text or called him, sometimes he was available. Sometimes he wasn't. It was just a really, really big problem. It was just a lot of frustration going on, a lot of fighting and arguing. Um, and then, you know, it came to one point where there was just a lot of aggression um coming from Gerald Bryson and Gerald Bryson um supposedly is one of the founders of the union um because he was fired on his day off um apparently for having uh, an, an argument with a female manager um and then you know it just went on from there it started on the WhatsApp chat just very disrespectful um telling me to resign a lot of arguing going back and forth um, people were complaining of membership from the rank and file were complaining that some people were just acting inappropriately during the barbecues, um, engaging and, you know, doing things that they just didn't feel comfortable with. I would put it on the WhatsApp chat like, hey, you know, there's members from the building, the rank and file reaching out to me, calling me, texting me, complaining. And then, you know, the aggression would be towards me. Um, it was it was just a lot. Um, the fact that I got put into the vice president role, um, I didn't ask to be put in the vice president role. It happened um, because there was a domestic violence situation that came up with Devic Palmer and his 
former girlfriend. And this is something also that led to a lot of frustration and fighting um, because no one was told about this domestic violence case. Um, now, you know, we find out that apparently Christian Smalls knew about it the entire time. And also the co-founders, um, Gerald and Jordan knew about it, but others in the union, um, the other officers, other people involved, um, I had no idea that he had an active domestic violence case. Um, you know, I've been a victim of domestic violence in the past. I take it very seriously. Um, you know, I have a no tolerance for violence against women at all. Um, I just will not accept it. And, you know, the fact that I didn't know that this, this case was ongoing, um, then, you know, the hit article came out, then we all saw the body cam video, right? Which that for me was like kind of a game changer. Um, it's one thing to see, you know, uh, a story, right? Because there was a lot of hit articles coming out at that time. But then it's another thing to actually watch the body cam video um, and everything that was said on the body cam video, the nonchalant attitude. It was just, you know, very um, disturbing for me to see that video. So, you know, I was appointed or actually I was voted in by the expanded executive board um, so that it was put on minutes. We have records for it and all of that. Um, so it was actually voted in by the expanded executive board. So I was actually the only officer that was ever voted in by an expanded board, right? Technically, because everyone else was appointed um, by Christian Smalls. And um, that's how I became, you know, the vice president. It was something, it wasn't something that I asked for. Um, it was just, you know, I was a senior officer at that time. And then once I became vice president, it was just like a lot of microaggressions, attitudes, um, you know, just a lot of uh, rhetorical type of conversations and things, um, things like that, that started happening. Then, you know, there was an issue. And again, in the WhatsApp chat um, where Gerald just got really disrespectful, told me to resign um, told me that he was going to flame me, that he's not the one. There's a whole bunch of like street talk on the WhatsApp chat. Um, I asked him not to come to the office on the WhatsApp chat. He decided to come to the office anyway. An argument broke out. Um, I felt very threatened by Gerald Bryson. He had to be pushed out of the office several times. The security guard from the second floor came downstairs because it was just so loud that everyone in the building could hear it. Um, you know, and when he came downstairs, Jordan was dragging Gerald out of the office. He was pushed out of the office like three or four times. Um, I, you know, went ahead and decided to email the entire executive board. I went home. I had a conversation with my husband. He told me um, that it was going to be my word against theirs and to go file a police report. Um, he said for my own personal protection and for my own records of uh, the fact that this happened at the union hall. He said, um, just go to the police, you know, I'll go with you. Let's go to the precinct and just file a police report just to make sure um, that it's on record that this actually happened. You know, after that, it just turned into a whole nother thing. Um, they decided to put me on a leave and then they had, they went ahead and decided to hire a third party investigator that cost the union um, $10,000, a $10,000 investigation um, for them to then say um, that it was just a lie, that apparently I just made the whole thing up, that uh, there was no aggression ever be, um, from Gerald Bryson to me. Apparently, it was all in my imagination. I just made the whole thing up. So, um, this is what they started saying. Oh, oh. And then from there, you know, it was just much more malicious uh, lies and slander. Um, but this happened in the month of October. Um, what I was hoping for was some type of an internal resolution, maybe, um, you know, an apology, a code of conduct being put in, policies and procedures, a change um, within some of uh, the organizers and people's attitudes. Um, towards myself and towards each other um, because there was a lot of arguments breaking out during that time. It wasn't just myself. It was several other people engaging in disagreements and arguments um, during that time as well. It sounded like there was also some some arguments or questions over some finances and switching from yeah. 
something with bill.com to expensify so something like that in there why is somebody still using an account that was super old uh, again this th that gets super into the weeds and uh, i'm not sure exactly how relevant or how important that is to the entire conversation but i mean that you sent it i thought i thought it it should be mentioned and and was important um